2023 Porsche 911T First Drive, The Unconnected Car Our boss boss has this idea he keeps bandying around, the dumb car. We're still workshopping the name. The idea is simple, as more and more cars become rolling iPhones connected constantly to the internet and broadcasting data about you to the nebulous cloud, a market may exist for disconnected vehicles. No subscriptions, no over-the-air, OTA, software changes, no personal data collected and sent off to be anonymized and analyzed and sold. The new 2023 Porsche 911T might be the closest we're gonna get to such a thing. Splitting hairs. Make no mistake, the 2023 Porsche 911T is absolutely loaded with electronics that make it drive the way it does. Sensors and actuators and all sorts of things controlled by complex software are responsible for the behavior of everything from the steering to the throttle to the brakes. The world isn't going back to carburetors and vacuum spark advance, as that genie is long out of the bottle. In fact, the new 911T has more electronic equipment than the old one, including electronically adjustable dampers, active engine and transmission mounts, and a multi-mode sport exhaust. Full transparency, the 911T's infotainment system is connected and able to receive over-the-air updates and linked to a smartphone app, but you can still turn off the data sharing and refuse to use the app. Even the OTA updates are limited to infotainment software, not vehicle controls. For a modern high-end vehicle, it's as close as you're going to get to going off-grid in a brand new car. Getting to the point and the drive. To dwell on the details misses the point here. The 2023 Porsche 911T isn't about screens and apps and self-driving technology. It's about you driving, the way it feels, the experience you get from it, and the joy it brings you. There are much, much faster Porsches. There are much more technologically advanced, cutting-edge Porsches. Then there's the 911T, with a manual transmission and nothing but the performance options, so long as you show some restraint in the build. To drive this car, you need only a key and your skill. All its fancy electronic tricks are concealed cleverly so you never actually feel them doing their deeds. They blend so seamlessly with their purely mechanical counterparts, the standard manual transmission and mechanical limited slit differential, that you can't help but think there's no electronic wizardry going on at all. The whole menagerie works together in such harmony, the car feels completely natural going down the road. You immediately fall into a rhythm, the 911T flowing through corners with practiced poise. Every change in direction or velocity is smooth and clean. It's a car that rewards intentional and deliberate driving. The more measured and precise your inputs, the better it works. There's no wrestling or fighting with the steering or throttle. The more zen you are, the faster and easier the car slithers down the road. The new 911T is similarly a masterclass in balance. Its weight and power are in excellent proportion, its brakes appropriately strong, and its dampers, in their softer setting, appropriately stiff. Far from the most powerful or quickest 911, it's a car you can use every inch of on a public road without fear. You can enjoy the drive, the connection between human and machine, testing your limits and the cars, all without having to worry about getting in over your head. Admittedly, it's difficult to suppress the little desire in the back of your mind for more power, especially if you've driven high horsepower 911s. Whether you have or haven't, it's eminently clear this chassis can handle far more grunt, and once you know so, it's difficult not to covet that power. That's why those 20-something other 911 variants exist, after all. Give the 911T more power, though, and you're just building a 911 GTS. This is a car, then, intended to be appreciated as it is. It is the least expensive, most approachable entry point to the 911's driving potential. Room for improvement. That's not to say it's perfect, though. As has been the case for years now, the 7-speed manual gearbox works great in the lower gears and gets fussy in the higher cogs. Running through 2nd, 3rd, and 4th on a mountain road is delightful, but trying to quickly and reliably differentiate between 4th and 6th or 5th and 7th on the morning commute is needlessly frustrating. 
Similarly, the delightfully small GT steering wheel continues to block your view of the outer gauges on the digital instrument cluster, most notably the fuel gauge. There's also a sense, if you drove the last 911T, that Porsche has civilized this car a bit. It's not nearly as loud inside despite retaining the thinner rear glass and continuing to jettison significant sound deadening material. The two-mode dampers allow you to opt out of full-time sports car ride quality. The two-mode exhaust lets you turn down the noise whenever you want. It's a more comfortable car to drive every day and less of a raw sports car. Although we find that somewhat tough to digest in principle, we have trouble arguing with the result. The new 2023 Porsche 911 T drives as well or better than the old one in spite of its half measures toward comfort, so it's not easy to be mad at Porsche for offering new ways to use the car without taking much of anything away from the experience. At the end of the drive, you've still received the same wonderful tactile responses. The steering is still light and delicate and talkative. The brake pedal is firm and responsive and communicative. The shifter's throws are short and tight, the pedal's perfectly positioned for heel-toe action. The chassis leans into corners, is unfazed by mid-corner bumps, and constantly reassures you of its capability. This is a car that tells you in every way possible you can be confident in it. Get it while you can. The only way to escape the coming of the connected car is to buy used. If that's not your style, you're going to have to make some compromises. Fewer and fewer cars will offer you the deal the 2023 Porsche 911 T does, the feeling of driving a disconnected car with a modern suite of performance and entertainment technology. It's already too late to dish the in-car modem entirely, but you still have the choice of turning it off and losing nothing in the driving experience. Depending on how you look at it, it's just connected or disconnected enough, and that almost certainly won't be the case the next time around. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.